Reading for May 20th, Science of Mind, A Philosophy, A Faith, A Way of Life by Ernest Holmes. Reading from page 204, paragraph 5, through page 207, paragraph 2, using inclusive language. Right thought, constantly poured into consciousness, will eventually purify it. Discord might be likened to a bottle of impure water. Healing might be likened to the process of dropping pure water into the bottle, a drop at a time, until the whole is clean and pure. Someone might ask why the bottle could not be turned upside down and at once drained of all the impurities. Sometimes this happens, but not often. Meanwhile, a drop at a time will finally eliminate the impurities and produce a healing. In treating, go beyond the disease and supply a spiritual consciousness. A treatment is not complete without a great realization of life and love, of God and perfection, of truth and wisdom, of power and reality. Sense the divine presence in and through the patient at all times. Whether we say that thought goes out or that it is operated upon by principle, makes little difference. It is very evident that until a thought is created, there is no operation. It is evident that thinking sets causation in motion, whether the word used heals or simply sets the law in motion really is of small import. The practitioner is in the same mind in which their patient lives. Consequently, since each is in the one mind, the patient is sick in the same medium and in a certain sense in the same mind in which the practitioner lives. And because this mind is indivisible, the practitioner can, in their own mentality, reach the thought which causes the patient to be sick. Whether we say they send out a thought or that they simply realize a thought makes no difference. The simplest way is to say that the practitioner realizes within themselves, upon the one mind, through the one medium, in the one law. The practitioner realizes a certain truth about their patient within themselves. Therefore, they set the law in motion for their patient. The operation of this law may be thought of in the same way we think of the law whereby water reaches its own level by its own weight. The practitioner knows within themselves, and this self-knowing rises into the consciousness of their patient. It is like planting a seed in the ground. The practitioner sows the seed, and the creative mind produces the plant. Does the soil operate on the seed, or does the seed operate on the soil? We do not know, but we do know that when a seed is put in the ground, the law pertaining to growth operates and a plant is produced. And that you, unless a seed is planted, no plant will be produced. In practice, we make no attempt to send thoughts to our patients. We know there is but one mind. We will say that A represents one who is sick and desires help. B represents a practitioner. B thinks into mind, and whether we say that they are thinking within themselves or somewhere else does not matter. They are always thinking into mind because they are in mind. But one might say, quote, the practitioner thinks into their own subjective mind, end quote. Yes, if you wish to designate it as their subjective mind, but their subjective mind is only their atmosphere in the one mind. We must understand this very clearly, else someday there will be a wall between our thought and its ability to heal some person who happens to be at a physical distance. Both the patient and the practitioner think into one common mind. Therefore, when a patient comes to a practitioner for healing, 
The practitioner does not try to hypnotize them nor suggest anything to them. They declare the truth about the patient. To the degree that the practitioner brings their own consciousness to a true recognition of perfection provided there is a subjective receptivity in the mind of the patient, the person will be helped. The practitioner does not try to hold a thought nor to send out a thought. They simply try to convince themselves of the perfection of their patient. The practitioner does not try to make their word operate through their patient, but only attempts to know the truth of what they state. The patient must be receptive to the truth. Then the truth will heal them. The practitioner is dealing with universal law backed by omnipotent power, which is divine principle. This is what Jesus meant when he said, quote, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. End quote. Every time we think, we are thinking into a receptive plastic substance which receives the impress of our thought. When we stop to realize how subtle thoughts are, how unconsciously we think negation, how easy it is to get, quote, down and out, end quote, mentally, we shall see that each is perpetuating their own condition. This is why people go from bad to worse or from success to greater success. Only as we gradually, definitely, and intelligently take true ideas and build them into the structure of our own thought can there come the desired reaction. In mental treatment, the practitioner deals solely with ideas and treats neither bodies nor conditions. They never manipulate, nor should they, lay hands on their patient. They do not care where the patient is when they are treating them or what they may be doing. The practitioner's work begins and ends in their own consciousness. This should be constantly borne in mind.